Hey, Jody, this is a really good question, which I'm going to read. Curious about how xylitol impacts the body. Uh, in fact, the title of it says xylitol, friend or foe, or both. And the answer is both. Um, I thought it was a decent sweetener that didn't impact insulin and helped with teeth. However, a patient brought to my attention that there was a study published recently uh, stating that it was contributing to cardiovascular disease. And what is your take, Dr. Sean? Uh, so my take is that uh, this is a classic example of the dose makes the poison. Uh, so xylitol, along with uh, other, other um, sugar alcohols like uh, erythritol, sorbitol, can be really, really good for us in tiny doses. And by tiny doses, I mean less than a gram. Uh, this would be the amount that we use to sweeten something. You know, so xylitol and sorbitol and erythritol um, are, are sweet, right? So when we taste them, we get a sweetness sensation on our tongue. Uh, when, we, when we swallow that, those small amounts go down into the gut and we don't really digest them that well. And so they end up being a source of food, fuel, nourishment for the microbiome. So the bacteria in our gut will actually use those sugar alcohols and, and it's, a, it's a prebiotic effect. It helps the good bacteria grow. So that's a, that's a great thing, right? So it's, it, you know, these sugar alcohols don't cause problems for teeth, right? They give you sweetness without cavities. Um, they, uh, they're, they're very sweet and they're not really digested, so they're pretty non-caloric. Um, they don't really spike blood sugar levels, and so you'll see them in a lot of sort of low-carb foods. Um, so, you know, all, all wonderful stuff, right? Here's where the problem comes in. The problem comes in when companies start using them at really, really high levels. And so you'll see this in those kind of low carb foods. You'll see companies putting in not just, you know, a few hundred milligrams to make something taste sweet, but they'll put in grams. So a thousand times more than that prebiotic effect. And they'll use it as, as sort of like a carb replacer because they don't have to put it on their label as carbohydrates. You don't have to put it on your label as sugar. And so it, the food looks like it's low carbohydrate. It tastes sweet, like it might be in an energy bar or a or a um, or a protein shake or something like that. Um, the problem, though, is when you take those really high doses, um, they will be they, they will not be prebiotic in the gut. They'll actually cause gut problems. So sugar alcohols will actually cause water to be absorbed into the gut, and that will lead to bloating and flatulence and gas and just nausea. You just don't feel good when you're when you're um, when you're taking those high doses. You know, here we're talking about. 10 grams, 20 grams, 30 grams, you know, leads to those gastrointestinal side effects. These studies that you're, that you're talking about, uh, one came out last year uh, on erythritol. Another one came out very recently on xylitol, uh, both put out by the same group um, in, uh, at the Cleveland Clinic uh, in Ohio. So a really good research group. And they found that when you're taking even higher levels, 30 grams, 40 grams, 50 grams, and the way they delivered it in these, in these studies, they gave it in a drink. Like, so you might get, you know, this amount in a, in a, in a sugar alcohol sweetened soda, you know, something like that. Not only did it cause those gastrointestinal pr problems, but it led to cardiovascular problems. It made the blood more likely to clot. So you could, you could think of it as that you, have one of those really, really high levels of sugar alcohol, it's going to make your blood thicker. It's going to make your blood more, more, more predisposed to clotting, which is going to be bad for your, for your heart disease risk, right? Cardiovascular problem. A little bit lower levels of that, gastrointestinal problems. Really, really low levels, actually a good thing. Uh, from a prebiotic perspective, anti-cavity perspective, sweetness perspective, blood sugar control perspective. So doses the poison. A little bit's going to be a good thing. A medium amount is going to be a so-so thing and a high amount is going to be a bad thing. Uh, and so we can think of this for almost any nutrient. We, we think of this for antioxidants. If you have too little antioxidants like vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, those kinds of things, it's a problem. Your cells will be damaged. If you have too high a level, too low a level is bad. The right level, that sort of medium level, is going to protect your cells. It's going to reduce oxidative damage. It's going to you know, have an anti-aging effect, so to speak. A really, really high level, you start mega dosing with those antioxidants, it's actually going to cause more oxidation. So you're actually, 
you know, inducing the problem that you're trying to prevent, you know? So that's a concept uh, that, 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 that biological variation um, is something that we see across all of biology, you know? It's, a, it, it's an inverted U-shaped curve, right? A little does one thing, a lot does a completely different thing. Someplace in the middle, that balance point, that Goldilocks principle of being just right, that's where we want to be. And these sugar alcohols are a perfect example. So you can counsel your patients, Jody, that if they're taking just a little bit of these sugar alcohols, xylitol, sorbitol, erythritol, they're going to be fine. But they really want to make sure they're not taking grams and grams and grams of it um, because that's going to lead to those problems. Okay? Hope that Hopefully that helps.